Hello and welcome to the Flourishing Introvert Talks with me, Joe Rawbone. This is the podcast that celebrates the natural gifts of introverts so that we can flourish in all situations. Episode 165, Putting a Spring in Your Step. As I figure many of my audience might be listening over the April break, I thought I'd create a short episode about the importance of putting a spring in your step. What does it even really mean and why might it be important right now? The exact origins are unknown, but the phrase put a spring in your step means to walk with energy, with confidence, with enthusiasm. And we know that first impressions count. So portraying this energy is very important in life. Of course, this idea won't appeal to those who like to use their introversion as an excuse or play victim But we know that behaviours like this are part of the body's reciprocal processes. Look happier to feel happier and walk with energy to feel positively energetic and so on. It seems so relevant right now as we're experiencing the first flush of spring here in the UK. New lambs in the field, daffodils bobbing their head in the breeze and a bit of warmth in the sun if you can get out of the wind, that is. Anyway, I shared a video on Facebook last week of a new lamb frolicking and it most definitely had me smiling from ear to ear, as did most of the people who saw it. And being Facebook, it then showed me a succession of other young energetic animals finding their feet and relishing the fresh grass outside. For me, this is the best analogy which serves to remind me that if I put a spring in my step, as the new lambs do, I'll experience similar joy and zest for life. Regardless, it can't hurt me to be more fleet of foot and in a somewhat playful way. I'm not suggesting Monty Python's Ministry of Silly Walks, but the thought of that probably brings a smile to your face. And if you're too young to remember that particular sketch, do a search for it and see if it makes you chuckle. Why now, though? Well, we're all having a bit of a rough time of it. What with everything going up in price, conflict still raging and the level of unrest around the globe. Maybe all we're looking to do is to create a life we love that provides what we need for our loved ones. And yet, For many of us, it means going out into a fractious world in which to earn our crust. But be there we must, in some shape or form, so why not do it with a smile playing around our lips and a spring in our step? We might just lighten someone else's day too. Did I tell you happiness is contagious? Well, it is, so let's be spreading it around liberally. I imagine I've already lost the doom and gloom merchants who prefer to catastrophize than look for the silver lining, but I'm sure there are enough of us left to make a difference. How might we put this spring in our steps then? I'm going to share just seven of the ideas that come to mind for you to pick and choose and add to as suits your needs and temperament. You'll have heard me talk about some of these before and that's okay because we almost can't be reminded of them enough, I feel. Number one, practice gratitude. There are so many ways to do this and my favourite of the moment is the gratitude jar where I'll pop a few words about something I'm grateful for on a slip of paper and drop it into the jar. It's always such a joy to have a lucky dip sometime later and pull out something, maybe small yet utterly beautiful, that has me appreciate the power of things we often overlook when we're too busy or too preoccupied with life. Just this week, I dropped in how grateful I am for the brightness of those bobbing daffodils in my garden and those lining the roadside. Second on my list is Choose Happiness. From a positive psychology perspective, happiness involves several key factors, including positive emotions, engagement, meaning, positive relationships and achievement. 
Dr David Hamilton, a renowned author and speaker on the topic of happiness, and I've spoken about him before, emphasises that happiness is a choice. It's not something that just happens to us, we choose it. Every day, and every moment of every day come to that. And of course we know that it's contagious. Hamilton points out that when we're happy we are more likely to spread that happiness to others. By being a positive influence in the lives of others, we can not only improve their lives, but also our own. What a fabulous thought. Number three on my list is compliment strangers. My favourite is to go up to another woman and tell her how much I like her hairstyle or her glasses or her smile or her shoes Remember that fabulous Donna Ashworth piece? It goes like this. I said your hair looked amazing, but what I really wanted to say was, your energy sparks a little bit of something in mine, your smile warms my heart, and when you laugh, I just have to laugh too. It's like a bubbling stream of fresh water running through my soul. I feel like the sun is shining on me when you're near and when I leave you, sad as it is, I feel like I've been charged, plugged into the mains for an infusion of fizz and life. But I said, I love your shoes instead. I hope you heard what I really meant. Wow, that piece really resonates with me and these days I'm getting much better at saying what I really mean. And it may still start with, I love your shoes. Number four on the list is get into nature. And if you can get your hands and feet in the soil, or the sand, or the sea come to that, connecting with nature is incredibly grounding and life-affirming. I have the garden on my mind as I've been pottering and planting out my little veg seedlings my dahlia tubers and my sweet peas, to name but a few. The benefits of even small scale growing show it can improve our mood and reduce the symptoms of stress, anxiety and depression. An added benefit is that it can promote mental clarity as we focus on creating the right environment and handling our tender plants with care. Number five on the list to put a spring in our step is to take a social media and smart device break or even have a digital detox. The spring break is a great time to do this as people deliberately switch off. Play with creating an out-of-office message that will cause others to smile and maybe even follow your lead. I think my out-of-office will say... I'm either out in the garden or at the seaside, so if you leave a message, don't expect an immediate reply. It was only a few weeks ago that I talked about the perils of our immediacy habit, so let's break that one, particularly over this April holiday spell. Number six on the list is put on some stirring music and dance. Dance like no one is watching and like you don't care. As William W. Perkey said, you've got to dance like there's nobody watching, love like you'll never be hurt, sing like there's nobody listening, and live like it's heaven on earth. We're all together too self-conscious, and honestly, what's the worst that could happen? I loved seeing my friend Jennifer Page post a video of her doing an acrobatic handstand during a marathon or a charity walk. That girl had a spring in her step and I applaud her for it. Last on my list, number seven, is to put on your Sunday best for no reason. Don't save it for special. Every day is special. I now wear my lovely jewellery even when I'm just going to work. I'll put makeup on or not to please me and no one else. Use the best china for your takeaway and your crystal glasses for your beer. Anything that makes you smile. Buy yourself some flowers or pick some from your garden. You don't need a special occasion. 
I picked a few daffodils that had been knocked about a bit by the wind, but they're still beautiful and I can enjoy seeing their happy faces. So in conclusion, do whatever you need to do to put a spring in your step over the next couple of weeks. Watch out though, it's addictive and contagious. So when we hear about a surge of springiness, you'll know the possible origins. And as Christy Brinkley said, adopting a really positive attitude can work wonders to adding years to your life, a spring to your step, a sparkle to your eyes and all of that. Here's to all of that and more. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, then please subscribe, rate us and leave a comment because we know that that helps other people find the podcast. And if other people find us, other introverts can flourish. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.